We are now going to look at our last optimization technique and we are going to do this using parabolic interpolation which essentially means that we're going to use parabolas um, to really make an approximation of what our function looks like and we'll find the vertex of that parabola to help us estimate where the minimum occurs. And so when we start this, um, again, our goal is to try and come up with some parabola that goes through some of the points on our, our graph here. And in order to figure out what A, B, and C are here, we would need to choose three points. Okay? And the reason we need three points is because we have actually three unknowns, A, B, and C. Okay, so this is going to create a system of equations that would be really easy to solve if we did a little bit of linear algebra. Okay? Although we're going to skip out on that part for now. Okay? But uh, let's, let's see how that would work. Okay? We're going to go ahead and pick again, x1 to be 2. Um, x2 to be 5.5 and x3 to be 6. And the idea here is that in between x1 and x3 is our minimum. Okay? It looks like it's actually occurring at 4, which it, which it actually is. Okay. Um, and so it's definitely between there. x2 is supposed to be our estimation for the actual root. Um, while we could have done a lot better based on looking at this graph, um, as long as x2 is in between x1 and x3, we're fine. Okay. Now the question is, is how to come up with a, b, and c. Okay. Well, we would like, we would like, let me maybe move up here a little bit. We would like our polynomial to have these matching y values compared to our function f of x. Okay. So in order to do that, let's maybe think about the y value here. Okay. Well, that would be found by looking at, I'm going to maybe switch this to another color here. Uh, let's try this one. Okay. So our y value at this first point okay, is f of x1 okay. and I would like to plug x1 into this polynomial so a times x1 squared plus b times x1 plus c so there's one equation but again when you plug x1 into f it'll give you some number and of course, when I plug in x1 squared here, that'll give me some number and x1 is a number. Um, so you'll have three variables to begin with, a, b, c. Everything else is going to be a constant, but then we can create a second equation from this other point here. Well, the y value is f of x2 and the x value that we're plugging in is x2. So I'm gonna have a times x2 squared plus b times x2 and then plus c and then we can write actually one last equation which is necessary um, f of x3 is equal to a times x3 squared plus b times x3 plus c okay. so it's this system of equations that we need to solve in order to find A, B, and C. Okay. And we can do that and it'll create a polynomial for us. And in fact, if we want to see what that polynomial looks like, we can come right down here. And you can see this blue thing is our parabola that goes through our x1, x2, x3. Okay. Now, the other important thing is after we get that parabola, we'd like to find its vertex, okay? We'd like to find its vertex. 
okay? and specifically the x value of the vertex. And so you can do that. Um, let me write this x value of vertex. Some of you might remember this from uh, pre -cal yeah, pre-calculus, although you could actually prove this also using calculus, but the x value of the vertex should always be given by x equals minus b over 2a. Okay. Now, this uh, vertex that we just found here, I get, again, I want to point out uh, what these all were. This was x1, this was x2, and this was uh, x3 here. Okay. This is going to be our x4. Okay. Again, x4 is always going to come from the vertex of the parabola that we've created. Okay. And so it could be to the left of x2 or it could be to the right of x2. But it should always be in between x1 and x2, or x1 and x3. Okay. All right. Um, next, okay, next, let's think about what we're going to do. Okay. Well, the question is, is, well, what's this vertex here going to actually look like? Okay. And we actually have a formula for it, which we will write down uh, right Right, and you can see I've zoomed out here a little bit, and that's because this equation is actually pretty long. So if you were to, again, solve the system of equations in pink, then use your vertex formula, is what we would get is that x4, okay, and this would be a lot of algebra. It would not be fun. We'd end up with x2 minus 1 half, and then all times a really long fraction here. We'll see if that's long enough when we get there. Uh, we should have x2 minus x1 squared times f of x2 minus f of x3 and then minus, and so I think this does need to be a smidge longer, minus uh, x2 minus x3 squared, and then our f of x2 minus f of x1. Okay, so there's our numerator. And then now we need our denominator, which is going to be all over x2 minus x1. And then times f of x2 minus f of x3 minus x2 minus x3. And then times f of x2 um, minus f of x1. Okay, so that's how we're going to come up with x4 each time is using this really long formula. Okay. Now, once we've come up with our x1, our x2, our x3, our x4, okay, the question is, is you know, what's the next iteration look like of this? Well, is what I'd like to tell you to do first is we are actually going to sort these. Okay, so like right now, x4 happens to be the smallest one, while um, maybe x2 is the large or x1 is the largest. But we want these to go from in order, um, smallest to biggest. So we'd like um, actually let, let me reword that. Let me reword that. So We'd have all these x values, right? x1, x4, x2, x3. Okay. We'd like x1 to be the smallest x value. We would like x2 to be the second smallest. Okay. And then we'd like x3 to 
be a little bigger, and then X4 to be the biggest. And we like these to be in order. And we'll actually use something uh, called sort. So maybe, maybe I could actually do that. Um, how about, um, I'm gonna write sort, okay, and let's say sort of X. And X would just be a vector containing X1, X2, X3, X4. And the output is, say, X star. Okay. So I'd call this X1 star, X2 star, X3 star, and X4 star. Okay. So now that they're in order. Okay. Now let's see what we're going to do. We're going to look at four different cases. So it could be the case that X1 is the smallest, it could be the case that X2 is the smallest, or you can't see it, but there we go, X3 or X4, any of those. Okay. And whichever one's the smallest is how we're gonna determine what to get rid of. So if X1 or X2 is the smallest, is what we're gonna do is we are going to discard X4. Let me write that if x1 star or x2 star um, results in the minimum y value, we will, again, eliminate x4. Okay. And if x3, and actually I want to point something out, if we do get rid of that, you can see that the actual minimum is still within the uh, three X values we have left. Okay. And again, I'll cut this out. Okay. Again, you can still see the minimum is within X1 and X3. Okay. But let's look at these other two. So in the case that, so maybe let's say else, we're gonna eliminate X1. And let's see that this actually makes sense. And this is what we're gonna get rid of. Um, and so you can see the minimum is between X2 and X4. And same within this last situation. Okay, so that's really everything we need. We know how we are going to shrink our interval so we can get closer and closer to where um, the optimum X is. Okay. Um, and we also know how we're gonna compute X4 here and it's gonna be with this mess of an equation. Okay. And so as what we'll do is on Monday, we will code this.